Welcome back to another Attack of the BT Mod Pack tutorial. I am Digimaster, and I will be your Digimon on today's learnage. Rah, learning is fun. Yes, today we're going to learn to build a new fancy, well not new, another fancy gadget from my Let's Play world, Proximity Doors. Woohoo! Proximity Doors. Now, with other mod packs, if you have like ICBM or whatever in there, you have a proximity block, which makes this much, much easier. We do not have that in Attack of the Bee Team, so we do it like this. Yes, like that. You just walk near the door, it opens. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to make this. Let's get started. A few things you are going to need. You are going to need an airlock. An airlock, which is made... You gotta make sure you go to the moon to make these, which is made from Galactic Crafts, compressed me uh, meteoric iron, two of them, a basic wafer, and six compressed iron. You're also gonna need at least, what was it, seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, at least seven. <laughs> of these airlock frames, which are a little more difficult to make. They are made of six compressed aluminum, two compressed steel, and an oxygen condent concentrator. I don't know why I always have trouble saying it. I always try to say condenser, but it's not. Now, to make this, you need a tin canister, three tin, four steel, and an oxygen vent. So that's how you make all of that stuff. You're also going to need a drawbridge. A drawbridge is from Tinker's Construct, or Tinker's Mechworks, sorry. It is made of two aluminum brass ingots, one um, blank cast, which is made of aluminum cast, uh, aluminum um, brass as well. Um, four ingots do not use to compress, it's more expensive, of bronze, or Tinker's Alloy, whichever it wants to say. One dispenser and one thing of iron, or iron, redstone, to make one of these guys. They are very cool blocks. We will get into what they do here in a shortly. You also need a toggle latch. The toggle latch is made of these circuit plates. Circuit plates are made from smelting smooth stone once more. And you can get two of them, I believe, per, s or one. I, I believe it's two per smelt. Yes, I was correct. Um, you get these cathodes by putting a redstone torch on top of one of these circuit plates. You get these conductive plates by putting a piece of redstone on top of one of these plates in a crafting bench. And you also need a lever. lever. You need two conductives, two cathodes, four circuits, and a lever to make one of these toggle switches. Super simple. A detector. The detector is from Artifice. And it is made with three string and a redstone and a basic frame. A basic frame is five sticks, four planks. Super, super easy. And you get eight of those. So super easy. You also need red alloy. Red alloy is made from three red alloy ingots, which come from smelting red iron compound, which comes from making, um, combining eight redstone around a single piece of iron for one compound. And you get 12 of those every time you make one. We're also going to be using for decoration stone bricks that have been um, chiseled. And we're also going to be using advanced blast walls, which have a better resistance against creeper blast. But you can figure out how to make I mean, they're pretty easy to make. Just, yeah. <laughs> they're just for decoration. I'm not going to go on how to do those right now. So, how does this work? Well, we're going to start with this guy. We have an airlock controller with our seven airframes around it. So, this is set to 10 meters. You can have it set to open when a player is nearby. See, so it'll close when I get out of 10 meters, and then it'll open when I get closer. Um, you can have it set to open when a redstone signal, so you can have it open when you flip a lever or anything else. And you can also have it not open when a player is nearby, but if you're on a server, you can set it to a certain player's name so you can keep people out. Uh, you can invert the selections, so you can click this and it'll close within when you're in with 10 meters. And you can set the horizontal mode so you can have these up and you can have them facing down. And it also tells you the status of the block right here. I have this one set to 10 meters. So that means this block right here is 10 meters. So boom, it opens. I get out of that space. It closes. I'm right here, nothing. I'm right here, 
There we go. Jacobs took a second. Then we have the red alloy coming down off of this detector, which the detector is directly on where the door closes, because it has to, to update. Um, this detector is a block update switch. What a block update switch is, is um, it's a bud switch, um, block update switch. Uh, like when wheat grows one stage, that's the, that causes an update. When you click or run over redstone and it gl starts glowing, that causes an update. Placing a block causes an update. All different types of things cause updates. So when this thing opens and closes, it causes an update, which triggers this guy to have a pulse. So if you look down here, see it every time I put the block and um, destroyed the block, this flashed, and that is the update. Then we attach some red alloy, ink, red alloy wire to these guys into our toggle switch. See how it says in? And then the out comes out and around into our drawbridge. The drawbridge, I said, was a very cool block. It has the advanced blast walls in there. This is what tells you, tells what's going to come out of the drawbridge. This disguises it. Incognito, so it looks just like the floor. Um, it, on connected blocks like this, it will not have the connected texture, so just be warned. So that is how the door works and is put together. So let's build one, shall we? Let's build one together. So let's let's move out a little ways, like yeah. So that door is closed. Let's slam one of those bad boys down. Then just seven around, like so. And that's all we need for that. We're just gonna click to open when the player is nearby. We're gonna put it to ten meters. We can put it to whatever you want. Um, however, you're making this setup because these don't have to be set up directly like this. There's tons of different ways to position this. You just have to be kind of of snazzy about how you do it. I put it at 10 meters for ease of use of putting it directly horizontal with each other. Um, this is a radius, so even if I'm 10 blocks diagonal from this thing, it will notice me. 10 blocks that way, 10 blocks that way, that way, that way, that way, that way, up. It doesn't matter. This thing will determine if I'm in range. Um, so, doing that, that's I put it at 10 blocks for setting up reason. Knowing this, if you bring it five blocks down, when you uh, when you get within five blocks, it'll still activate. It's a radius, not directly in line with it, just so you know. So now we're going to set this block down here just for a second to place our detector block. We're going to go ahead and smack this out, and we're going to connect our red alloy. Now that our red alloy is connected, we're going to set this guy down to where it goes in. Fill our hole back in. Then we're going to take our red alloy and we're going to go out 10 blocks. We didn't place this in the same spot, did we? It doesn't look like it. So actually we want to stop there. So this should keep it on. Alright, let's go back and set the time. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a bigger door than our last door. So we're going to do it like that. We're going to go bloop and bloop. Just like so. Now let's build out a little bit. So we can have a, a walk up. Let's make sure it clicks when we're right here. Perfect. So now we're going to put our blocks in. Let's put in three blocks. And then we're going to disguise it as one of these bad boys. So three blocks of this and that. And, oops, yeah, that. And now we're just going to build around for, ooh. That goes up three. Yep, just like that. There we go. Boom. What was that about? Ah, see? When we're too close, this is powered. When we're too close, we want that unpowered. So we flip that switch, diverting the on off in some random direction. It doesn't matter. So now, when we're out of range, our big old blast door is up, 
and then we come in frame, goes down. This this can be set to where you know this block updates it so that when you get closer you don't have to wait, you can just keep on walking. But I have it set up that way just because that's how I have it set up. You can put this closer, you can make the door so you can have the door open faster or sooner when you're walking down the hallway. Like open here or open here. You can uh yeah. You can have it open right when you get there like I do. All different types of ways. I said you could put it down underneath before. So you could do something like I have set up over here. Because this was me mocking up what I have in my world. I have a blast door right here and one right here. So I wanted my hallway was three wide. And I didn't want to accidentally activate this every time I walk through my hallway. when Even if I'm against the wall here. So I have it set up to where it doesn't activate until you get right here. Now I have this one set up because it comes down and out. And this one is set to five meters if I remember it. See? Set to five meters. It's nice and compact. See? Super easy to get to. No problems whatsoever. And when I'm right here in my base, it won't activate. I get right in front of the door. I can enter. So that's it. That's the proximity doors. They are super simple super easy to do. Um, if you have another mod like ICBM you do not need this. Uh, ICBM has a like a proximity block that does everything I just did um, in one block. This is just kind of a workaround since Attack of the B team does not have that block installed or that mod installed. So there we go. There's simple easy proximity doors that will open when you get within range of them. Um, there are tons of different ways to, uh, variations of how to make it work, and, or set up, like in position-wise. They don't have to be directly followed, as you can see that one's underneath. Um, so yeah, just play with it, you'll get it to work. It's a little fiddly, but it works. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed showing you. Open my door. <laughs> this has been Digimaster, and this is a tutorial on proximity doors. But you know that. You watched it already. <laughs> stay tuned for more tutorials and stay tuned to my Let's Play world to see these things, these fancy little things first. That's where I make them. And then I just come here and show you exactly how I did it over again. Yeah! <laughs> Alright, guys, this is Digimaster saying goodbye bye. Bye bye. Bye 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 bye.